<laughs> the MCU built such a strong fan base after the first Avengers movie because they did such a good job in bringing in all these heroes after establishing who they were within their respective solo films. DC, however, struggled with this and seemed to rush into the Justice League, having only released a Superman and Wonder Woman movie. Right away, the fan base shrunk for DC. The DC did their best to try to revamp the franchise with Aquaman, Wonder Woman 1984, Trash 84, and Shazam, but to no avail. A big issue with these films is the audience struggles to take these characters seriously, as the community aspects of the films are way overboard sometimes. Thus, the viewer's ability to take care for the heroes is diminished, and suddenly the film doesn't feel like a DC movie anymore. These fans who have lost faith in the franchise are going to be the hardest to win back on Gunn's part, so perhaps scrapping the previous storyline is the right move, allowing the franchise to start over with a clean slate. This won't be the first time Gunn has brought life back into the DCU. After the 2016 Suicide Squad film practically flopped, Gunn directed his own version of the movie in 2021, and it it was an enormous success among both critics and the fans, even though I didn't like it. He also created and co-produced the film spin-off HBO series Peacemaker, Shitmaker, Pissmaker, which, which is regarded as one of the top tier projects of DC in recent years. This is all without mentioning his success with the Guardians of the Galaxy trilogy, which, which is a massive fan favorite. If these various successes can show fans one thing, it's that Gunn is more than capable of making solid comic book adapted material. I mean, which is why David Zaslav hired James Gunn and Peter Saffron in the first place because they have such a stronghold and have such knowledge of comic books and such pure love for these comic books. I mean, the guy introduced Starro in the Suicide Squad. Starro! Like, who would have ever thought we would ever see Starro in a live action film, but he did. Not only does DC already have an established cinematic universe, but there are more projects going on simultaneously with the DCU reboot. There's Todd Phillips' Joker and Matt Reeves' The Batman, both of which are producing a sequel. However, with the rest of the DCU scrapped, projects like these two are, are going to be part of the DC Elseworlds, similar to MCU's What If. The Flash helped clarify this aspect as introduced the multiverse into the DCU, which allows for an entirely new storyline to be made on a separate timeline than the previous films. With that, Gunn is not only able to bring in new heroes into the universe, but to incorporate pre-established heroes on an entirely new timeline. Some titles he revealed both as a film and series include Superman Legacy, The Brave and the Bold, which will follow Batman and his son Damian Wayne as Robin, Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, and even even a detective HBO series called Lanterns, which will follow Howard Jordan and Jon Stewart as Green Lanterns investigating space crimes. Gunn will also contribute to the Elseworlds universe with projects like Swamp Thing. Even though Swamp Thing will be part of the DCU, but it's going to tell its own, you know, adult R-rated story, which will play into the larger plans of the DC universe, which we still don't know yet. I mean, what is the overall Endgame, no pun intended for the DCU, we still don't know. And quite frankly, I don't want to know. I want to I want to keep that as tight wrapped as we possibly can because again, I don't I don't know who the big bad is gonna be. Uh we may have some theories on maybe, you know, uh the center being a, a villain. The center is basically this alien race, which was introduced in Justice League New Frontier, which I feel like James Gunn is gonna be heavily inspired by. Uh, not only by the story, but the aesthetic and maybe the costumes. I think I think James Gunn is going to go really old school with the DCU, uh, sort of bring back the the golden age or silver age or bronze age of the, of the DC universe, which will be vastly different from what Kevin Feige is doing with the MCU. Again, it's a really smart way to separate itself from Kevin Feige's MCU and to, the, and to this new DCU. Uh, so that's going to be very, very curious to see. I just hope that James Gunn, Again, once this is over, once Aquaman 2 is released and once it flops, <laughs> hopefully James Gunn will just completely cut off everything, everything for the DCEU. If, if you want to do your Peacemaker Season 2, okay, fine. Do your Season 2, and then after that, that's it. That's it. It's over. And, you know, we... 
you got to do your Peacemaker season two, and we and we bring in brand new characters. But you know, it all depends on what James Gunn is gonna do. But hopefully, I have faith in Superman Legacy. I think James Gunn is going to harken back to the old school Christopher Reeve action comics. You know, the the really science fiction aspects of Superman with Brainiac and Lex Luthor and stuff like that, and more of the more of the uh, out of the world villains like Live Wire or Mister um, Mister Pickleick or Parasite. I think that would be pretty cool to see. But I, th I think James Gunn is going to go really, really old school with this. And listen, we all know that the DCEU, the Snyderverse, Man of Steel, BBS, Zack Snyder's Just League, it, it just did not end well with the general audience. The general audience, as I've said this a thousand times, they were not receptive to Zack Snyder's take. And even though you might like it, you might think it's the best thing ever, that's fine. But guess what? You are in the minority because the majority said, no, we are not paying for the DCU anymore. We're not paying for movies like The Flash or Blue Beetle or Shazam or Black Adam or Aquaman 2 because we are done with this universe. That's just facts. That's the way it is. You may not like it, but you have to accept it. So now James Gunn has an uphill battle on his hands to, again, bring back the general audience. Because it doesn't matter about, you know, what we, the hardcore fan base, it doesn't matter what we think. Because we are the tiny, tiny minority. We are the 0, 0.000 population who make these movies the gigantic monster hits that they are. The reason why these movies make millions of dollars and sometimes even billions of dollars is because of the general audience. Got it? Truth out. But daddy is a state of mind, you know what I'm saying? I'm your daddy. <laughs>